Hello, Dr. Vicki Peterson here. Vitamin D is a really important topic because so many people are deficient in vitamin D3. It's associated with cancer and so many different diseases and we're just really sure that low vitamin D is a problem. So there's really no argument about that. However, I do get a lot of comments about why am I recommending that you supplement vitamin D3 along with vitamin K2, which we'll get to in a moment. Why do I recommend supplementation with something that's rat poison? If you've not heard this, let me clarify. Uh, cholecalciferol, that starts with a CH, um, that is another name for vitamin D3. Uh, cholecalciferol is used as rat poison. So, yeah, that sounds a little scary. I getcha. It's like, okay, why would I do that? Understood. Um, you can think about it a couple of different ways. One is, if you have a dog, you know that dogs should not eat chocolate because it's toxic to them and it can kill them. You, as a human, can enjoy chocolate in moderation and do just fine. So, similarly, uh, you would need a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. So let me, I wrote down the math here. Um, to kill, not even kill, to a 50% chance of killing a one half pound rat so half a pound, not even a full pound, you would need 100,000 international units of vitamin D3 to kill a half pound rat. Now look at your weight and extrapolating that would be 40 million international units or so to hinder, endanger your health. These are units of vitamin D3 that nobody is ever talking about. Um, what we do talk about is that 2,000, not 40 million, but 2,000 international units of vitamin D3 is a good maintenance dose to keep you at a healthy level. So about 50 in the average um, typical lab test. And so uh, sometimes labs have a different measuring system, but the average one, so we're talking about 50 in units and um, sometimes up to 60 if you've had a cancer history, maybe a little bit higher, but you know, between 45, 60, that's a nice, nice good level to shoot for. Now, what if you're at 20? If you're at 20 and want to get to 50 in increments of 10, that's three increments of 10, right? From 20 to 30, 40, 50. Okay, good. So you take every increment of 10 that you want to increase, and in this case it was three, and you multiply it by the 2,000. So that would be 6,000 international units would be what you want to take for a while to increase your vitamin D3 to the level that you're trying to attain. So that's kind of what we use here at the clinic. That's not an unusual type of recommendation. 2,000 to maintain and then more as you want to increase and get to a healthy level. Now, if you are taking vitamin D3 in a supplement and it's not changing your D levels, then there's reasons for that. We want to look at uh, fat absorption, etc. cetera. Uh, but in generally speaking, that's what we like. D3 is a fat soluble vitamin, so is vitamin K2, and I would like you to, to take them together. So uh, eating a little bit of fat at the time that you take your, your D3 will help with absorption, but if you're somebody who's not absorbing fat, then we have to get to, to that reason, all right? So D3 helps you absorb calcium, but unfortunately, if you are deficient in vitamin K2, that calcium might be deposited in a place you don't want it to be deposited. So in the earlier days when we were recommending uh, vitamin D3, all of a sudden some research came out, it's like, hey, you know, these people that are taking this D3, they're having more calcification of their arteries and a shorter lifespan. It's like, okay, that's definitely not what we were trying to create, so what, what were we missing? What we were missing is that there's a nice marriage of the D3 and the K2 together, and what happens is the vitamin K2 tells the calcium that you're now absorbing better where to go. And of course, you want it in your bones, you don't want it in your arteries, you don't want it in your kidney. So you don't want to make, be making kidney stones, you don't want to be hardening your arteries, you want it to go into your bones. So there's a lovely balance there of the K2 telling the D3 
where to go. So that's why I like a supplement um, that is a liquid. It's tasteless. Uh, still, you know, there's fat soluble vitamins, so take it with some fat. Um, but it's they're very it's very easy to take. One drop is about a thousand IU's, so international units. So you just take as many drops as as you need. They're very easy, very very easy to take. Um, so as far as the whole rat poison thing, I would love to put this to bed. Uh, yes, it would be great if you lived in not too northerly of a climate and you could get sun when you over lunchtime and you got some fresh air and some sun and that was enough to keep your D levels where they should be. If you um, had a really healthy gut and all the beautiful fruits and vegetables that you hopefully ate would turn into uh, K2 in your gut. But unfortunately, a lot of us don't live in the right, at the right latitude to get that much sun. Unfortunately, our guts are not as healthy as they used to be, and we don't have that healthy, healthy microbiome to turn the K1 and fruits and vegetables into the K2. So we need to supplement K2. Uh, other than natto, N-A-T-T-O, which is a soy-based product or certain fermented vegetables that have K2 in them. Otherwise, K2 is found in uh, meat products, and I'm not a fan of recommending a lot of meat. Fish once or twice a week is about as much as you're going to get out of me. So um, I like meat and dairy products to be basically nil or very, very, very occasionally. And so you're not going to get your K2 from that kind of diet unless you love natto. And I've heard from a lot of you that, no, it's delicious. And then other people say it's the most disgusting thing I ever ate. I'll be honest, I've never tried it. So I can't weigh in on the taste. And of course, taste is very personal. But you can get it from natto. You can get it from fermented veggies. And then, of course, you can get it in a supplement. So what else did I want to tell you? Oh, it's really important that you get enough magnesium, which really along with the D3 and the K2, Americans are really deficient in magnesium as well. Now it's in bananas and uh, beans and broccoli, cashew nuts, what else is it in? Oh, seeds like sunflower seeds and um, pumpkin seeds. So those are the plant foods that it's high in. But a lot of Americans just don't have good magnesium levels and magnesium is gosh, does like 200 different processes in the human body. So taking a little magnesium, I like to take magnesium at night. It relaxes the muscles, helps you go to sleep. And um, there's often 200 milligram capsules of like a magnesium um, citrate uh, that you can take. And uh, you, I like to have patients take it up to bowel tolerance. So you can take 200 and take 400. If you start getting a little loose in the stools, then you can back it down. So you can play with it a little bit to see what a good level is for you. And it's very you know, safe to do so. Uh, but yeah, it's important that you get enough magnesium. So I think that was everything, yeah, that I wanted to cover on this. Um, it's really important that you check your vitamin D3 levels and it's important that they're at a healthy dose. Once again, if you can get it from the sun, great. But if you can't, then I do recommend supplementation. Just balance it with that K2 and with the magnesium. Uh, it was great talking to you. Let me know your comments and I hope to talk to you again soon. In the interim, if your health is not where you want it to be and you want some help, that's why we're here. We live to help. We do functional medicine here at Root Cause Medical Clinic, and it's all about getting to the underlying root cause of why your body is not functioning the way you desire it to. So reach out for a free consultation. The phone number is 408-733-0400, or visit the website rootcausemedical.com.